And this is Odin's story. Last year, I was having quite a bit of difficulties with my health. Lots of issues. And we soon found out that a miracle had happened. That miracle was Odin. I had been told by two different doctors that I was no longer able to become okay. pregnant. So the last thing we expected was for a positive pregnancy test. But it has been an amazing, wonderful surprise. Needless to say, I was a little bit nervous and a little bit scared. I was 41, almost 42 years old, and I was going to be having a fifth child with my thyroid issues in full rage. I didn't know how it was gonna go. I was a little bit scared. I was put into the high risk category for my advanced maternal age and for my thyroid issues. And I was concerned that it was going to be detrimental to my health and the possibility of things being wrong with the baby. But it turned out to be the complete opposite. It was a full on miracle. I had a perfectly healthy pregnancy, wonderfully healthy baby, and the pregnancy even cured my Hashimoto's, pretty much. You don't really cure it, but it is close to remission as you can get. My levels dropped down to almost zero for my antibodies for Hashimoto's. That was a huge relief. I immediately had relief of all of my thyroid symptoms at the beginning of my pregnancy. And I quickly learned why. It was because my thyroid was healed by this little miracle. So entering into my pregnancy, I had a lot of severe pregnancy symptoms, sure. I was in a lot of pain. I had um, a lot of round ligament issues that were very, very painful and I had a lot of pelvic issues that were pretty extreme especially towards the end but what was the real surprise was during the pregnancy we started to hear this word coronavirus it started to pop up in everyday conversation and before we knew it it was full-blown global pandemic we very quickly went into quarantine to make sure that nothing happened during my pregnancy and to make sure that the baby wouldn't be affected. We stayed in quarantine until he was six weeks old. Well, actually, we're still in quarantine for the most part. We've allowed a few close family members um, and close friends into our quarantine circle, basically. But because of the quarantine, everything about a hospital birth changed like that. And everything about a hospital birth became something I was extremely afraid of. I was afraid of being alone in the hospital. I was afraid of having to come into contact with all of the COVID-19 positive patients. I was afraid of them taking my baby away if for some weird reason we became symptomatic or tested positive, even if it was a false positive. There were a lot of stories in my birth groups about the babies being taken away and dad's not being able to be there because he would have had to stay home with the boys. Um, and just the, the boys not being able to meet their brother right away. It just did not sit well with me at all. And right about 35 weeks pregnant, my OB's office started doing things differently. And she basically just ghosted me. Um, it was, it was pretty interesting because that was about the same exact moment that we had already decided we were gonna do a home birth. We reached out to a few different midwives that were not able to meet any accommodations for us at all. We were trying to find one that would either do payment plan or um, reduce rate and the ones that we talked to would not reduce their rate even though it was only five weeks of pregnancy and a birth that they would be dealing with they also said that they expect payment in full by 36 weeks I was like well I'm 35 weeks so you would need all the money next week and that's just not doable it's a 
pretty expensive endeavor to have a midwife present for your home birth. So we started researching free birth and we were just about ready to take the plunge and give birth by ourselves with no medical team at all. But it was terrifying me. Again, I was racked with fears. And that's the last thing you want to be feeling when you're carrying a little baby. You want all positive vibes. So at that point in time, a very dear, kind family member reached out to me and said, I would like to get you a midwife. And I cannot even tell you how grateful I am. We are <laughs> Odin is for that amazing gift because we wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise and we would have been in fear still for the rest of the pregnancy and the birth, I think, to not have somebody there that's medically trained um, to know what to do in case anything did go wrong. So we were able to find a midwife who was able to reduce the cost of the birth for us and got signed up with her. As soon as we met with our midwife, we knew that it was the right decision. She was perfect for us. She reminded me of my mom. She was very on board with everything that we were wishing to have in our natural childbirth. And I had always wanted to have a home birth. It was just never something I could do because of the cost involved. My insurance covers a hospital birth 100%, but they don't cover anything for a midwife. And so I had always just done the hospital birth, but done it naturally in the hospital. We were very fortunate that we were able to do it at home. And that also meant that we could do a water birth. So Ryan, at first you were a little bit intimidated by the whole water birth part of it. You were fine with the home birth. You were like, yeah, yeah, yeah I've birthed enough goats. Yeah, goats are mammals, babies are mammals. I was fine with that idea, but the idea of a water birth was a little bit scary to me. Um, I thought so many things could go wrong. Having the baby in water and having that pool in the house. Um, yeah, I, I felt like a lot of things could go wrong there. So I was a little bit concerned, but she really wanted to do it. So I uh, wanted to help make that happen. So he got us all set up. We, we ended up buying just a simple kiddie pool, blow up kiddie pool off of Amazon for $20. It was gifted to us. And he got a food grade hose yep. and a connector for the sink. And he got it all. So knowing that we were gonna be all set up for it to work perfectly, he blew it up in advance so that if I went into labor, all we had to do was throw it down and start filling it up. Yeah. So we went a little bit overdue. I was not too concerned with going overdue because Liam was actually overdue. But Odin decided to go a little bit further past Liam. And on Mother's Day, I had scheduled to have all the kids there for our traditional Mother's Day spent with mom with a nice Mother's Day dinner. And that morning I woke up with contractions. A Mother's Day miracle, wouldn't you say? <laughs> so it was a week and four days after my due date when this little guy finally decided that he was gonna come and visit us. The day was spent relaxing with the kids I had contractions that were very irregular, sometimes five minutes apart, sometimes 20 minutes apart. None of them were strong. They were just good contractions. They weren't Braxton Hicks anymore. Um, and we went for a walk down here to the pond. The cat followed us just like she's followed us here. And then we went and we visited with the goats for a little while and me and Fancy Girl got to hang out a little bit being both huge pregnant bellies. We weren't sure who was going to go first, Fancy Girl or me. <laughs> I won! <laughs> so it started to get close to dinner time and Ryan was like, well I'm going to start prepping stuff and getting dinner ready. He was going to go pick the asparagus from the garden. Um, we were going to have farm fresh asparagus from our own backyard with some wonderful salmon. Ryan's gotten really good at making salmon for me. 
it's been one of the things that I loved through my pregnancy. Um, so it was the perfect dish for Mother's Day. So I decided that I was going to try to get some rest. I had gotten up early that morning with the contractions starting. Yeah. And I was just ready to just go into my meditation space. It was something I had been doing throughout the end of my pregnancy when I was feeling not relaxed about being overdue. <laughs> I would go into the bedroom, turn on the salt light, nice pink glow, and put my diffuser on with my essential oils that are helpful for birth and put on my meditation music and lay down. And I was able to sleep through the contractions. They were they were nothing at that point. It was around what, four o'clock when I went to lay down? Yeah. And around six o'clock I was awoken by a strong contraction. One that finally had me going and working my way through it but it had been like 30 minutes since my last contraction so I was like well I guess nothing's happening um, anytime soon and I texted my midwife and I said well they've been irregular all day so she said yeah well maybe sometime tonight or in the morning and I thought the same within minutes everything changed <laughs> Very quickly, my contractions started getting really close together and really painful. It was pretty intense, pretty fast, and I knew it was time to call the midwife, and I told Ryan to start filling the pool. Yep, so I folded out the tarp, laid the pool down, it was already inflated, had the hose all ready to go, stretched it through the house, connected it to the sink, turned it on. Meanwhile, midwife has been, been called. She's on the way 45 minutes. Plenty of time to fill the pool, right? Get the midwife there and have a nice, easy going birth. Well, it went really fast, like way faster than just those 45 minutes almost. Um, I had pictured she would be on the bed and have the baby there if the midwife didn't make it we, we would skip the pool part well she was feet on the ground bent over on the bed could barely move i had to help push down on her back at some point but meanwhile midwife's on the way and the pool is filling uh, we weren't so sure that she was going to make it to that pool uh, i was convinced though we had this pool and this plan you're having the baby in the pool. <laughs> At one point, he was like, you got to get in the pool. And I'm like, I can't move. The contractions were so long and so on top of each other that we weren't even tracking it anymore. And I was, I was just not able to do anything through the pain. And I was like, you're going to have to pick me up and throw me in. <laughs> well, he almost did. Almost did. Did, but did manage to slowly convince her to get to the pool. Uh, midwife was called again. I thought I was going to have to have him be walked through delivery because I could feel the baby was about to come out. And I knew that it was time to start pushing or he was going to just come out on his own without me pushing. Midwife said she was 10 minutes away. Meanwhile, we made it to the pool. I could yeah. see him coming. I could see it. I was ready. I All was, that beautiful hair. I was super calm and ready to receive this baby. And he when, was. He was so calm and it was helping me so much to have him so calm and ready. And the, the midwife walked in just in time to take over. I was able to grab the camera and start filming and I did manage to catch the birth on film which was a totally that's that's my best camera work ever in my opinion yeah i was <laughs> i was on my hands and knees under the water and i was really like in a blackout zone from the pain for like the whole last hour and i just i, I remember hearing the midwife say get him he's coming and and he was coming up from underneath me and I look down into the water and I see my baby boy down there 
just looking up at me under the water and I just grab them and pull them to me and it was so magical. It was just the most amazing feeling in the whole world. It was everything I had ever dreamed it would be to have a water birth and I was just so content at that point. The, the whole experience afterwards even, um, everybody in the house, the boys, Rowan and Liam and Vivian was there and Dalton was there. Everybody got to be a part in some way. And Rowan and Liam just adored him from the very first moment they saw him. They wanted to just hold him and brush his hair because he had so much hair and hold his little finger and look at his little feet. It was just perfect. And to be at home, it was so relaxing. Nothing like a hospital birth. I wish I had done it with every single one of my pregnancies. And if we were to ever have another child, I would definitely, definitely do another home birth. Yeah, great experience. And we were went to bed at a normal time. And oh yeah. Didn't get waking up every hour like we right? were in the hospital. It was, I got, I got a full night's rest the first night of having a baby, which was really weird feeling for me because in the past, the hospital, they wake you up every half hour to hour to check your blood pressure and do this and that, to push on your belly. It was, it was such a difference. And having a midwife that was very experienced, knew exactly what she was doing. She did all of his well checks for the first couple of hours that after he was born and Ryan got to have skin on skin with him because he was right there, you know? And normally um, when, the, when the mom is getting taken care of by the nurses, the, the other nurses take the baby and poke and prod them. Odin didn't have to deal with that. He got to go against daddy's heartbeat, skin on skin, while I got attended to. And it was just such a peaceful experience. And he was such a perfectly healthy little baby. He was trying to nurse seconds after being born. And, <laughs> and he has continued to be a great nurser. That's kind of what he's asking for right now, I think. So anyway, Odin's story. He has been an amazing boy. Um, he is two months old now. The first six weeks were a little bit hard on me. First four weeks, I had some issues and uh, I worked through them. There weren't anything I had to get medical help for, but it was, there were some difficult moments, but I worked through it and starting to feel like my old self again. I don't have any pregnancy symptoms now, so that's nice. And most of my thyroid symptoms are completely gone and have stayed gone. Uh, I had a little bit of um, neuropathy in my legs and feet. But other than that, I haven't had like the major mood swings and the, it's, it's been amazing. So we're hoping and praying that the thyroid stays at a normal level. And we know that Odin is just a super chill little dude. I mean, he doesn't cry. He'll fuss a little bit, but he does not. He's just such a happy little guy. He's very content. He's very happy. He, he nurses like a champ and he sleeps really well at night he takes lots of great naps during the day he's been my easiest child so this was not as bad as i was afraid it was going to be when i first found out and he's been our little miracle really truly is our beautiful little blessing we had to wait till he was six weeks old to meet his grandparents that are here local but when, when they finally did, it was a wonderful experience. Everybody's just been so happy to see him. And, you know, we're, we're still maintaining a pretty strict level of quarantine, even though it's not required anymore. We have loved ones that are medically fragile and we want to keep them safe. So we are avoiding public contact pretty much pretty much all together. Ryan has a, a job that's an essential workforce, so he does have to go out 
but when he goes out, he's wearing his mask, he's washing. When he gets home, he removes all of his clothes, washes up, doesn't touch anybody or anything until he has, and he maintains an incredible social distance while he's out. And we're just enjoying this time, you know? It may be a global pandemic, but we're having more intimate time with our family because of it, I think. And that's been pretty special. There are rays of light even in times where the world might seem dark. And Odin is definitely our little ray of light. The littlest Viking.